How's it going guys? In this video we're going to go over the calculation of Van Hoff I factor for electrolyte solutions. And uh, basically here is the, the full definition. It's the measure of the effect of a solute upon colligative properties such as osmotic pressure, relative lowering of vapor pressure, boiling point elevation, and the freezing point depression. But uh, you, you measure it in the number of moles of particles per mole of solute. And um, essentially it helps us determine the relationship between the actual number of moles that were added to make a solution uh, and the apparent number as determined by the colligative properties. Um, so it kind of helps us fill in the difference between why uh, you know, the, the boiling point say is, is increased more than you would have expected or less than you would have expected based on the molarity that you think you added. Um, so here's our first question. A 0.085 molar aqueous solution of KNO3 has an osmotic pressure of 3.75 atm at 30 degrees Celsius. Calculate the Van Hoff I factor for the solution. So this is going to be kind of a, a long problem, um, but I'll try to map it out as I go. Um, what we're going to look at is basically what we have, the KNO3, what it dissociates into. So we have our potassium and our NO3 minus. And you can tell just by the formula that, you know, what the charges are going to be once you dissociate them. Uh, but basically what that is, two ions per formula unit. So that would be two times because there's, there's you know, and if this was a larger molecule and it broke into more than that, you know, the, the, the number of formula units is basically how many things you know, you're, you're, it's breaking down into. Sorry about that. So we have two times the 0 0.085 molar. It's going to be have 0 0.17 molar. And now we're going to calculate our osmotic pressure uh, using this formula here. We're just going to sub in for what we know we have. First of all, we have the M, we just found it, um, 0 0.17 mole per liter, I'm going to say, um, times we have our R value. Uh, and then in this case, we're going to use the 0 0.0821 because that is the one that has ATM in it. And obviously, we want our pressure units to be consistent. And then we have that mole times K on the bottom there, um, which cues us to convert our um, our pre or, um, I'm sorry, our temperature uh, by adding 273. So that's going to be 303 Kelvin. And then we'll just solve for that. Okay, so what I'm getting for that is 4.228971, which we'll say is 4.23. ATM. So now we have a pressure. Now uh, the next thing is the ratio of observed um, osmotic pressure. So basically we're, we're doing what the Van Hoff I factor is, is all about. Um, so we have I equals our measured pro uh, property over our calculated property. And in this case, that's going to be what we have for our um, ATM, 3.75 ATM is what they gave us. And we'll put that over 4.23, what we just found. Okay, so for that we're going to get 0 0.8865 and then we'll take that 0 0.8865 and it's, it's a, we have two ions per formula unit times two. One point seven seven three particles 
per mole KNO3 dissolved. So I kind of just wrote it out like, oops, sorry. I wrote it out like that so that we could kind of understand. Uh, I guess I'll leave that up there. Um, figure out exactly where we are. So basically, we're, we have 1.773 particles per mole of KNO3 dissolved. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take that and calculate um, the observed particle concentration. from osmotic pressure, which will be um, 3.75 atm based on what we what they gave us. Let's move this down. So from there, we're going to take our um, 3.75 atm put it back into this MRT. Yeah, the M times our R value, 0 0.0821 liters times ATM over Kelvin per mole, and then our 303. And then we're going to solve for this. All right, so I got 3.75 ATM is going to equal M times. 24.8763 and then we're just going to obviously divide both sides by that and then we'll get our M value okay so our M value is going to be 0 0.15 oh geez 1507 mole per liter and finally I'll, uh, I'll put this right here finally we're going to take the ratio of this value um, to the expected value so really what that's going to be is our 0 0.1507 m divided by and then we'll, we'll go back to what we had way back up here. All right, we're going to take that and then do 0 0.17 M is equal to 0 0.8865 times two formula units, so particles, or sorry. I'm gonna get 1.773 particles per mole of KNO3 dissolved. So, essentially what our I value is going to be. This is like the final quote unquote final step, but we basically already solved it. Um, particles observed over one formula unit of K and O3. So there's our, our answer for that problem. And, and like I said, that was quite quite lengthy. I wanted to just kind of end, end off the, the video by doing a, a bit of a throwback to one of the old types of problems that we were doing here. Um, estimate the freezing point of a 0 0.40 molar aqueous solution of FeCl3. And then we're gonna assume that the I is the number of moles uh, of ions fo uh, formed per mole of electrolyte. So this one is, is going to be a lot easier by contrast. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to take the FeCl3.
and then we're going to look at what it dissociates into. Um, so that is going to dissociate into Fe3 plus because you, you can see the numbers. You, you can do the flip method or whatever whatever floats your boat there. Um, aqueous plus. And then we're just going to carry over the 3Cl minus Aq. Make sure our balance is charged. We have 3 plus and then 3 times 1 minus is perfect. Um, and then from there, we have a total of four ions. There's two different ions, but basically what we're going to say is our I equals four here. And now what we're going to do is our delta T equals I K F M, which is going to equal, which is what we had all the way up here. It's one of our formulas there. Um, so we have our IKFM, we're going to just plug that in. So we have four times the, or for the I, number of ions. Um, then we have our, K, or our KF, which is the 1.86 um, degrees Celsius per mole molar. Um, and that's going to be times our M. Sorry, I should have made that bigger. It's getting kind of messy now, but 0 0.40 molar. And now we're just going to multiply this out. Okay. So what I got was 2.976 degrees Celsius, which is our change. So now we're going to do our TF is going to equal our TF degrees minus our change in T, which is 0 degrees Celsius minus 2.976 degrees Celsius equals negative 2.976 degrees Celsius, which is our answer. So yeah, I, I didn't go into too many of these problems because each one takes, you know, quite a lot of time. And I think that, um, you know, these are kind of rare, so I, I don't expect that, you know, most people will have too many of them. But uh, yeah, hopefully this helps someone.